بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد الأمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فأينما تولوا فثم وجه الله إن الله واسع عليم رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأفضة من لساني يفكه قولي أمين يا رب Today very quickly I want to introduce the topic of the true shape of our Kaaba that was built according to the foundations of uh, the Kaaba according to the foundations of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. You may have noticed that whenever we talk about Masjid al-Aqsa, they always show the picture of Dome of the Rock. You must have noticed this. Uh, for those of you who are not sure about what I'm saying, let me show you. When I type in Google in the images section, Masjid al-Aqsa, the most prominent picture we see is of the Golden Dome. Even though the Golden Dome is an important place Islamically, it is not Masjid al-Aqsa. And as you know, the Jewish community wants to build their third temple at Masjid al-Aqsa. And they always show us the Golden Dome. Masjid Aqsa is actually this masjid over here. This is the proper Masjid Al-Aqsa. Even though Aqsa is the whole area. Again, as you can see here also, as I went into this uh, particular website, uh, Muslim Hands, you see the Dome of the Rock. You do not see Masjid Al-Aqsa. Okay? Now, Masjid Al-Aqsa is actually this masjid right here this is the actually the the sacred masjid that has been mentioned or the sacred masjid aqsa as mentioned that is mentioned in the quran okay and so this is the area the prophet sallallahu actually led the prophets in the prayer unfortunately a very similar thing has happened with the kaaba when we think of the kaaba generally we think of the black uh the black uh, cube, you can say. Uh, and if I show you pictures of, if I look up pictures of the Kaaba, but before we do that, so you can have a contrast of understanding the issue this time, that the Kaaba is actually including what is called the Hatim. Now let me share with you what I'm saying, inshallah ta'ala. As I will shortly show you, inshallah, from the sayings of the Prophet وسلم, as well as uh, other Islamic uh, sources, this area, that is the semicircle, includes the Kaaba. Okay, this includes the Kaaba. There's an authentic narration of the Prophet وسلم, that Aisha radiallahu anha, she said to the Prophet, "I want to pray in the Kaaba." The Prophet took her inside this semicircle and let her pray the reason there is no construction in this area of the wall of the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was done at the time of abdullah bin zubayr an, when he was the khalifa and he was the grandson of abu bakr he put the kaaba back to its original foundations at the time of ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. This semicircle used to be attached to the Kaaba. And so the Prophet ﷺ brought Aisha into this semicircle and told her, This area is part of the Kaaba and you can pray here. And as you may remember, when you do tawaf around the Kaaba, okay, in your Umrah, you do not go. You go around the semicircle called the Hatim or the the uh, the Hajar of uh, Ismail Okay, so people come into this area, they pray to Raka in front of the Kaaba, and then they quickly leave because so many people want to pray in this area. And the reason people want to pray in this area is that it is actually part of the inside of the Kaaba. Let me first show you from the Islamic sources. Then I will let you even hear one of the Islamic scholars and then we will take the discussion from there in terms of its history. And then I'm going to make some very important points at the end, inshallah ta'ala. 
Okay. Now this is in the uh, in Sahih Bukhari. Okay. I'm going to read to you what Hibr al Ummah, the scholar of the great Ummah, the great Mufassir Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anh, he says while teaching people about Hajj, he says, Oh, people, listen to what I have to say and let me hear whatever you say and don't go without understanding and starting and, and, and started, he started saying, uh, and he started naming the people. Look, you and you and you, like you bring your students to Hajj and you want to teach them. So, you know, you brought your students to Hajj and you want to teach them. So then what? Uh, he wants, uh, he who wants to perform the tawaf around the Kaaba should go behind the hijab. A portion of the Kaaba left unroofed. So this is the portion of the Kaaba that's unroofed. Okay. And do not call it Hatim. We call it Hatim till today. But as you will see that uh, it, he called it Hajar and other people have other names for it, which I might go into a little bit later. But basically around this semicircle, he said, when you do the Tawaf, do it around, do not, do not call it Hatim. For in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, if any man took an oath, he would throw his whip or shoes or bow into it. Basically, what he's saying, now let me tell you the story of the incomplete Kaaba and who tried to complete it. And then we'll go back to the some of the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ on this issue. Look, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the Kaaba was to be rebuilt. As you know, the people of Mecca live in a valley. And in a valley, many times a flood happens. And many times Mecca got flooded and the Kaaba was hurt. And it had to be rebuilt. Well, even in those days, they said, we will not build the Kaaba except on completely, completely halal money. On money that is completely halal, we'll only build the Kaaba on that. So, you know, I just realized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so wise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, when talking about the Kaaba and talking about the building of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam of the Kaaba, one of the opinions, uh, uh, he, it says, قَوَائِدَ مِنَ bayt So the foundations of the house. And so the foundations of the house is which on which the Kaaba became rebuilt over and over again. But not all of it got rebuilt, as you'll see. So the people of Quraysh, they... So we're going to build the rebuild the Kaaba. We're going to do it with only halal money. This was the time where they were in dispute with one another about who will put the last stone, the black stone, into the place. And when they saw the Prophet ﷺ as the first person entering in the morning, and then that is when this happened. Well, they were not able to complete the Kaaba because there was not enough halal funds, even by Quraysh, even at that time to complete the Kaaba with the halal funds at that time. Okay. And so they had to do with whatever it was. Now the Prophet wanted, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he expressed uh, to Aisha radiallahu anha, and it was enough of a concern that Aisha expressed the concern to other companions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted the Kaaba to be brought down and rebuilt with two doors and a window. I'm going to show you that inshallah ta'ala. Uh, very soon. First, let me show you this one particular point. But the important point that I just mentioned in this hadith is the tawaf goes around the Kaaba. The Kaaba was rebuilt at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu but it was not completely rebuilt. And so the Prophet Sallallahu he wanted to give people time because of the idols were had just been removed from the Kaaba. So many changes had been brought that the the paganism had been removed, and so. They were still attached to the Kaaba the way it was, and the Prophet thought that in the future that the Kaaba would be completed. And so he mentioned this desire of his to Aisha radiallahu anha. And of course, you have to try to understand this that what when Aisha radiallahu anha heard this, she obviously informed who? Her nephew, her sister's son, meaning Abu Bakr's grandson, Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anha. When he heard of this, and he became the Khalifa, and yes, he became the Khalifa against the Umayyads, that when the Umayyads had changed the Islamic Khilafah into kingship, 
he stood up. He was one of the people who stood up against that kingship, that same kingship that Hussein radiallahu anh, the grandson of the Prophet, stood up against. So the grandson of Abu Bakr, the grandson of the Prophet, both stood up against the Umayyad, uh, you can say the beginning of Islamic, which the Prophet called Mulkan Adan, kingship that will bite. And as Islam changed from Khilafah into kingship, where the father nominates his son and his son nominates his son and so on and so forth. When Abdullah bin Zubair was against this, he became the Khalifa, he took over Mecca. And in fact, Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anh, and Hussein radiallahu anh, had an alliance together to fight against the Umayyads together. Long story, one day I have a video that in which I believe I've talked about these issues, but if not, I will be making others inshallah. Now, when uh, Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anh, became the Khalifa, and by the way, I want to mention, had he not been killed by the Umayyads, the way Hussein radiallahu anh, was killed by the Umayyads, had this not happened, then what he would have been known as a great, great, great scholar. Of course, the grandson of Aisha, the son of Asma, the house of Abu Bakr, just like Hussein. Had these people not been killed, they would have been known as great faqis in the ummah. Okay? And so Abdullah bin Zubair very well knew. And he had the Kaaba deconstructed and he reconstructed the Kaaba according to the will of the Prophet ﷺ, which included this area of the Hatim. Okay, so it was extended. And <coughs> I'm going to show you inshallah. But what happened is when Hijaj bin Yusuf came and destroyed the Kaaba. And they told that, you know, Hijaj bin Yusuf, you know, he changed the Kaaba and so they brought it back. They broke the 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 building that was according to the wish of the Prophet and brought it back to the way it was uh, before Islam. And uh, and then what happened is King later on learned, wait, I made a mistake. I was given the wrong information. This is what the Prophet wanted and he wanted to rebuild it. And and one of those those times, uh, one of the kings, uh, because they always wanted to rebuild the Kaaba back to its original form after uh, it had been built to its original form, and uh, Abd Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anh, had built it in its original form when he was the Khalifa, and then they tried to rebuild it. But Imam Malik was asked by Harun al Rashid, that should I fix it? Should I fix the Kaaba? And everyone at that time understood that the shape of the Kaaba includes the Hatim. Includes the Hatim, the area where we pray in when we're doing Tawaf around the Kaaba, the area where we don't, where we pray in the Turaqa to be praying inside the Kaaba. Okay, everybody understood this. Now I'm going to share with you a few other things. Inshallah, let's see how much time I have today. Not too much time today, maybe another 10 minutes. Or wherever I leave off, then another day I will, Inshallah Ta'ala, discuss this in more detail uh, with uh, more evidences and more proofs and more uh, history, you can say. Now, the Kaaba's shape is closer to the following. Okay, so this is the semicircle. Now, uh, there is a door. You see where the semicircle ends between the Kaaba and the semicircle, the space that is between that, the two point three three meters this area okay this area is where there are two doors okay I don't have time to show you the details of that today but this is the where the two doors are and uh, this area where it's called the brass rings there's a difference of opinion amongst the the Ahnaf and the Shawafi and the other scholars if this is part of the Kaaba or not I'm not going to go into it because that's not that important the thing I want to talk about is the shape so there is, uh, I'm going to share with you what there is. What, this is the shape of the Kaaba. So when we talk about the Kaaba, we only show the cube. But we forget that the other part of the part, of the semicircle includes the area of the Kaaba. Okay. And so I'm going to share with you a few things regarding this, inshallah. Inshallah, if you don't mind to make the issue a little bit faster, I want to... Uh, point out to this article built by Sound Vision who built the Kaaba, its size and its history. So I want to, the inside room of the Kaaba is 13 times 9, nine meters. So it's not a cube as it's always trying to, 
And people even said to the degree that the word Kaaba means a cube. The word Kaaba does not mean cube. That's actually a derivative meaning of the word Kaaba. I'll come to its meaning in a little bit. The ceiling and the roof are two levels made out of wood. They were reconstructed with teak, which is capped with stainless steel. The walls are all made of stone. The stones inside are unpolished, while the ones outside are polished and were redesigned uh, during the, the Saudi regime. Um, so now, uh, has been reconstructed up to 12 times. Scholars and historians say that the Kaaba has been reconstructed up to 5 to 12 times. The very reconstruction of the Kaaba happened in the time of Adam, والسلام, after that Prophet Ibrahim, والسلام, the eastern wall was 48 feet and 6 inches. The Hatim side wall was 33 feet. The side, that's the side wall of the Hatim. The side between the black stone and Yemeni corner was 30, is 30 feet. Uh, and the western side was uh, 46.5 feet. Okay. So there's the reconstruction of the Kaaba by the Quraysh. There was a flood. And the responsibility was divided amongst the Quraysh, four tribes. Prophet Muhammad helped in the reconstruction. The walls were re-erected. The argument erupted about who would have the honor of putting the black stone. And they never really finished it because they had insufficient funds. Since the tribe of Quraysh did not have sufficient funds, this, res this reconstruction did not include the entire foundation of the Kaaba as built by the Prophet Ibrahim. This is the first time the Kaaba acquired the cubicle-looking-like shape, but not cubicle. Uh, shape it was uh, now unlike uh, it was unlike the rectangular shape which it had had earlier the portion of the Kaaba left out is called now Hatim okay so that's the unroofed part the semicircle there's actually part of the Kaaba okay and the prophet wanted to build it with two doors and a window and people would go from one door and out the other door and uh, then who built the Kaaba at the time of Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu an, I just want to share with you the reference in terms of, uh, you know, not a proper classical reference that I will do another day. The Syrian army destroyed the Kaaba in Muharram of 64, meaning after Hijrah, and therefore the next Hajj Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu an reconstructed the Kaaba from the ground up. Ibn Zubair radiallahu wanted to make the Kaaba on how the Prophet wanted it on the foundations of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibn Zubair radiallahu an, he narrates that I heard Aisha radiallahu an has say, the Prophet said, if your people had not quite, quite recently abandoned ignorance, meaning Islam, they, if they had not quite recently abandoned uh, unbelief and ha had I sufficient provisions to rebuild the Kaaba, I would have added five cubits to it from the Hijr. Okay? Meaning the the side where it kind of ends uh, on the, on the other opposite side of the uh, the the round side of the hijab uh, of the of the semicircle from the side of the Kaaba he would have gone inwards. I would have uh, made two doors, one for people to enter and therein the other to exit. Okay, and Ibn Zubair said, "Today I can afford to do it and do not fear the people, meaning that they will leave." Islam because of it or hurt. Ibn Zubair built the Kaaba on the Prophet Ibrahim's foundation. He put the roof on the three on three pillars with the wood, uh, with with the uh, with the wood of oud. Okay, and uh, in his construction, he put two doors, one facing the east, the other facing the west, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted, but did not, uh, but not do it. The Prophet didn't do this in his lifetime. He re rebuilt the Kaaba. On the Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi foundation, which meant that the Hatim was included, meaning that semicircle was included in the reconstruction. The Hatim is the area adjacent to the Kaaba enclosed by a low semicircular wall. Ibn Zubair also made the following additions and modifications, put a small window close to the roof of the Kaaba to allow for light, moved the door of the Kaaba ground level and added a second door to the Kaaba, added nine cubits to the height of the Kaaba, making it 20 cubits high. It's So the most important thing about the Kaaba to keep in mind, it's not the construction of the building. The building is broken down and being built. It's the foundations, as the Quran mentions, and that includes the Hatim area, not the farthest area where the circle se semicircle is, as I will show you, but into this Hatim area, okay? Because today I don't have time, so I'm just giving a snapshot of the issue. 
the re, for the reconstruction, Ibn Zubair put up four pillars around the Kaaba, hung cloth over them until the, the building was completed. People began to do tawaf around these pillars at all times, so the tawaf of the Kaaba was never abandoned, even during the reconstruction. Okay. Then Abdul Malik bin Marwan came, destroyed the construction of Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anh, and rebuilt it based upon how the Quraysh had it. Okay, took out the Hatim and uh, pulled down the wall in the Hatim. So where the second this this semicircle is, he brought down the walls. Now it became a concern uh, later on after this tampering with the Kaaba was done. Imam Malik, uh, so to say, gave a fatwa, and the other scholars gave a fatwa that we don't want people playing around in the Kaaba. And so it was understood that the Hatim is part of the Kaaba, the semicircle is part of the Kaaba. And Imam Malik said, I don't want kings playing with the Kaaba, so just no king, please touch the Kaaba. Don't touch it, because you're going to ruin it. And so the better was to, to make it. But in this case, the harm, the chances of letting somebody touch the Kaaba, the harm was more than the benefit. I would go into so much detail about this, uh, brothers and sisters, but I want to end with a, a two important notes that I really just don't have time to, to do today, but I just want to say it very, very quickly, and then I'm going to show you one thing. Number one, the... The size of the Ka'aba, you know, the, the Ka'aba is amongst the Sha'ir of Allah, amongst the symbols of Allah. You have tall buildings, ten times taller than the Ka'aba, and the Ka'aba is so small, that means you don't respect the, the house of Allah. The house of Allah should be made higher according to what is the surrounding, so that it looks like, oh, this is the house of Allah. As long as it's on the foundations of Ibrahim, you've already tampered with it so much, and I believe, that sometime between, because the, there are ahadiths, which I don't have time to go into today, but before the Mahdi comes, the Kaaba will be destroyed. We already know the hadith that I've quoted and other scholars have quoted many times. Kharab, uh, Imran al-Bayt al-Maqtas, Kharab al yathrib The rise of uh, Jerusalem will be the fall of Yathrib, Medina. The Prophet said this. Meaning that it's also an indication that Makkah won't be in any like great uh, situation either. When the Mahdi will look for uh, comfort and look for a isolation and a place to run away to, he'll think of Mecca. Man amina. Whoever enters Mecca is in peace and security. But one of the reasons he's going to run there is because there will hardly be anybody there. And there are narrations that Imam Ibn Qasir and Badaya Nihaya, he quotes that what? The, the Kaaba, the area around the Kaaba will, will, will have been destroyed. These tall buildings you see today, they may not be there in 20, 30 years from now. Okay? The point being, that the Kaaba will not be in the state that it is in today, and when it will be reconstructed in its proper foundations, maybe in the time of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, it will be reconstructed inshallah ta'ala in the pattern of Prophet Ibrahim, according to the wish of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and according to the uh, how Ibn Zubair radiallahu uh, had done it. It's bad enough that the Kaaba is not its original form, but what made it worse compared to before and now is the black cloth. Because the sunnah of our scholars and of our entire tradition is not to put, uh, you can say, dark clothes over the Kaaba. So let me show you the different colors during the different eras of Islam that existed on the Kaaba, okay? So, for the Prophet appareled it with a Yemeni attire with black and red lines. Okay, so that's how the Prophet did it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this was not the shape, the one that you're seeing over here. This was not the shape of the Kaaba, but with black and red lines. He also had a turban that was black and red, if you remember. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, inshallah. Then in the time of Abu Bakr, uh, Omar, and Uthman, it was appareled with white. So this has always been light colors, just so you know. Never black throughout Islamic history until this Saudi regime came into existence. They wanted to give it the color of oil or something. Ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu, who we've been talking about, put red silk on it. He wanted to honor it and he said, he perfumed it. Oh, he gave it so much honor. I don't have time to go into it right now. Then again, during the Abbasi period, it was apparelled with once, white once, it was, uh, and then at another time with red. And then it was also ordained in yellow silk. And green. And then unfortunately now black. And the problem with black is that then people have associations with this that are extremely, extremely negative. And so you have a black cubicle on the forehead of a Jew that puts this black cubicle there, right? And is, 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 so this black uh, cloth and it shows the shape. And this is what they're trying to say. Look, it's the Garba. It's the Garba. And we deserve our feet to be in there. Okay. Just read, read the book, uh, Return to Mecca by the, by, uh, by the guy named Avi, whatever his name is right now. I don't remember. The Jewish guy, okay? Read his book, the Jew, Avi Lipkin, okay? Return to Mecca. And this over here is actually showing the thing that they usually put in their uh, foreheads, you know? This is the stuff that they usually put in their uh, foreheads. Uh, you know, this is what the Jewish people, what they do, okay? And so they have this black box. So here is a picture of the Kaaba, kind of like, uh, as you know, uh, many scholars include the Hatim, but part of the Hatim before the ending is not part of the Kaaba. And there's a, a little bit of a difference of opinion about the exact measurements. Okay, So we have to dig out what is there right now. And the researchers have to look back at the white yellow rocks put by Ibrahim والسلام, What is the original foundation of that? And build according to that. So this is one opinion. The other opinion is that this is the actual shape which includes the the hatim the whole of the hatim everything inside the hatim and the rest of the kaaba and the other opinion is that no it's just rectangular it's just a bigger rectangle and uh, there's different opinions on what these different terms mean okay what does the hatim mean versus the hajar ismail mean so on and so forth i'm not going to go into it it's not that big of a deal it's all understood that you cannot do tawaf in this area around the hatim that's you cannot Pray in there during prayer time. You cannot do tawaf in there during tawaf time. That is part of the Kaaba. So scholars need to do proper research uh, to and and perhaps we need to dig out the original foundations and build upon those foundations. But the the thing that I want to make very clear is that uh, we have disrespected the Kaaba by leaving it so small compared to everything, all the vastness of everything that's there. You know. Uh, and, and I'm going to talk about that at another time. And uh, you just can look at the pictures of what they have done. So here it is. You have the clock tower, the devil tower, clock tower. And over there is that little, little cubicle box that looks like a cube, right? That little cubicle box that looks like a cube, right? And people have no idea now what the real shape of the Kaaba is. And this is why I did this video, to just throw it out there, let people know. Islamic scholars know this, that what the real shape is, but the world does not. And this is the tragedy. The tragedy is, this is disrespecting the Kaaba. This is completely disrespecting the Kaaba. This is completely disrespecting the Kaaba. And they've essentially done with the Kaaba that happened with Masjid Al-Aqsa versus the Dome of the Rock. 
And now everyone thinks it's a black box, a black cube. They even say that it means the cube, which is not true, as I will explain in another video, inshallah. It, uh, it means the honored thing. Inshallah, I'm going to open up the Arabic dictionaries for you also to show this to you. It's not a cube, okay? This is the the Ka this the Kaaba basically in the form of its jahiliya, like the Prophet said, Medina will become Yathrib, right? Imran al Bayt al Kharab al Yathrib. This is the pre jahiliya, uh, 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 but even in jahiliya they knew they they knew that this semicircle is part of the Kaaba. Okay, so I want this to be very clear, and this is completely established in our tradition in our our rules and regulations for tawaf around the Kaaba, so on and so forth. I'm not saying something new, but a lot of people feel like, why are you saying something new? I'm not saying anything new. This is this is the traditional knowledge. So may Allah protect. May Allah protect us, inshallah.